All right, welcome back, brethren. It's just sorry about that there. I'm going to have to have two parts to this uh, sermon here. But picking up where we were there, I wanted uh, 2131. It says, The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. See, safety is of the Lord uh, here this morning. It is the will of God for his people to be safe. Yes, you know, we will go through difficult times here on earth. Uh, we will, uh, uh, you know, we will might even be persecuted. But, you know, safety is of the Lord. You know, like the, uh, the, uh, the great preachers of the Bible, like the apostles, you know, many of... Uh, many of those men were martyred for their faith, but, you know, God always preserved them until it was their time to go because safety is of the Lord. And us as believers, we do have a God that we are safe in. And now continuing on here, verse number 11, going back to Psalm 27, it says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Letter A here, lead in a plain path. Like what we've been talking about here, this is one thing that's been very, uh, a very reminiscent in this psalm. He says, Teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Because, see, we do have an adversary in the devil. And, you know, David, he had more people that were out against him. And the only place that we are going to be safe is in that path that God has for us. And we have to be like David saying, Lord, teach me your ways. Teach me how to live righteous. Teach me how to live right. Teach me how to be holy. Put me on that path that you want me on. Like the verse that we mentioned when we first opened up here, Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. See, if we're going to get down that path, we've got to have the word of God. Like we mentioned counselors there. Yes, it's wonderful. Like if you have a pastor, if you have godly parents, other godly relatives, godly friends. But you also have to have the Word of God. If you do not have the Word of God in your life, you are not going to get on that path. Like, unfortunately, I do mention on, you know, this ministry quite often. It's sad, all the people out there that never fulfill the will of God for their life. Why is that? Because they don't do anything with the Word of God. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you're going to fulfill what God wants you to do, if you're going to go down that right path, the Word of God has to be prevalent, has to be prevalent in your life. Matthew 7, 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many there be which go in there at. Of course, this is a salvation verse, and, you know, rightfully so. You know, Jesus is the only way to heaven. There's a broad way that goes to destruction, and that's every way other than Jesus. You know, that's rituals, that's in other gods, that's in self-righteousness. But only with salvation in Jesus Christ can one go to heaven. But, you know, it's just like that also for the path of your life. Like I may have mentioned this here before on this ministry, I'm not sure. But like I think that might have just been my life and our personal devotions. I mentioned that to her. I think this would be a great way to put it. If I got a puzzle of the of the world here, say there's a puzzle of the world right here, like if you're familiar with puzzles, you know that there are many pieces to that puzzle. But the pieces, though, to that puzzle, they can only go in one place. If the piece of that puzzle is to go here, you can't put it here. You got to put it here. See, it's just like that with your life. You know, with what God wants you to do. You are a piece of that puzzle, and only you go here. Nobody else can go here, and you can't go anywhere else. Because God has a particular purpose for you, for your life. Only one purpose, only one purpose. Well, maybe, you know, maybe more than one purpose, but, you know, that, that life is yours and nobody else. There's only one path. There's only one path that you can go down. I can't have your path. Nobody else can. And, you know, you can't have my path. You can't have nobody else's path. Because, see, we are, you know, all different. You know, we are all individuals. You know, like I mentioned, you know, you know the things that God has led me to do. You know, that's my ministry. You know, that's what the Lord has led me to do. Just because another pastor, another preacher, you know, doesn't help people with addictions or start a Bible college, that doesn't mean he's a failure. You know, that doesn't mean he's not right with God. That's what the Lord led me to do. 
And, you know, likewise, you know, just because I'm not doing other things, you know, that other preachers and other churches are, you know, I'm, I'll probably never open up a children's home. That's actually something I've thought about doing before, you know, mainly for like deaf, blind, and special needs kids. But, you know, that there are people that God leads to open up homeless shelters and open up children's homes. You know, just because I never open up that, you know, that doesn't mean I'm not right with God. That doesn't mean that, you know, that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not as good, for lack of a better word, as another preacher who opens that up. Because, you know, we all have our own, you know, purpose in life. You know, I won't, you know, I won't give an account, you know, for not doing the ministries, you know, that other preachers do. I won't give an account for not, you know, living my life exactly like other preachers. You know, we all have our own path in life. But whatever path that is ordained by God, you know, we better get on that path. Because that is what we're going to give an account to. That's why the Bible says, you know, every man will give an account to himself to God because the will of God for every individual is different. Because, you know, you can look at my face. There might be some other people that look like me. You know, I have some relatives that might look like me, but, you know, even me, there's only one Randy Todd Cooper born July 21st, 1986 in Columbus, North Carolina. You know, that there's nobody else that can claim that. You know, and I will give an account for what the Lord led me to do. Proverbs ten seventeen, He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth, refuseth reproof erreth. See, wonderful verse there. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. See, we see that again. You know, on our path, we have to keep the word of God. We have to keep a righteous life. You know, God, you know, will not lead you to do anything that's contrary to his word. You know, God's not going to lead you into a career of pornography. You know, that's something that's ungodly. You know, God's not going to lead, you know, you into a career of, uh, you know, of making and distributing alcohol. You know, God's not going to lead a person to do something that's contrary to his word. And whatever path of life that we are on, you know, we must keep the word of God. We must keep his instructions and live a holy, righteous life. Psalm 1 1. Great verse here. To finish this sub point off with Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. See so what I was just saying there. See, it's great exposition, uh, you know, to the message how God lines things up. I didn't even really plan that, but, you know, that's just what happens whenever you follow God in preaching. You know, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You know, we are not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You know, we are to go down that path that God has for us. And do our very best to fulfill his will. And uh, finishing it up here, now going down to verse number 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. See, letter B, see the goodness of God. See, that's one thing that you are going to see if you're on that path for God. You're going to see his goodness. You know, like when I opened up, I believe, you know, that's why the Lord, you know, had me open up, uh, you know, open up, you know, today's sermon the way he did. Because you're going to see the goodness of God whenever you first start out. Well, maybe not so much first start out. But whenever, you know, the Lord leads you to do something or God calls you to do something. You know, at first, you know, that, that might not look very, you know, might, might not look very promising. Like that's also what we looked at in the book of John class. You know, we, we looked at John 6 verses 1 to 15. Like whenever Jesus fed the 5,000. Well, well, out of the 5,000 men, really, that was more like 15,000 people. There were just 5,000 men, the Bible says. But, you know, at first, you know, all they could find, you know, like Andrew there, Andrew went, the disciple Andrew went back to Jesus and said, Lord, the only thing I, the only person I can find here is a lad. He's got five loaves of bread and two small fishes. And these loaves of bread, you know, weren't even like what we would call a loaf of bread. These were more like hamburger buns to make, you know, to make fish sandwiches. You know, truth be known, he had about it. He had enough food. You know, he had enough food to make about five fish sandwiches. You know, that that's really about all that he had there. To make about five fish sandwiches. He didn't have very much at all. 
See, just on the outset, you know, that didn't look promising, but what happened? They had more than enough. They took up baskets of food, of fish sandwiches that were not even touched. And see, and in the beginning, you know, that, that's how we can often look like with us, because you have to have faith, like we said in the book of John class. Nothing's worth doing if it doesn't require faith. You know, just like, just like the Bible says there, you know, Jesus asked Philip, you know, testing his faith, you know, Philip, what you think we ought to do? You know, and that's what the Lord does. You know, he just tests our faith with things like, you know, like he's done in my ministry, especially when we started back in 2019. You know, we had very, very limited resources, you know, to do anything. But since that time, you know, we started this ministry. We started Word Awakening, started Word Bible Institute. And now, you know, we've started a program, you know, to help people with addictions, temperance, temperance awakening. You know, that's just all by faith. You know, as I said there, God didn't pour all that out at one time. That was a step-by-step -step process. But just like the verse says here, we see the goodness of God. You know, not only that, I didn't even mention, you know, I didn't even have a secular job, you know, a lot of income coming in other than a little bit of support for our, for our ministry. But despite all of that, we were still able to pay off all our debts. Like loans and things we had, all paid off. You know, the only thing that we had was my wife's Social Security and a little bit of support. Wasn't even all that much. That's just the goodness of God. That's faith working. Like somebody asked me all the time, like when, you know, I started Word Awakening and I started a Bible Institute. You know, I'm a very busy person with all this. I don't have a lot of idle time. I like it that way. I love what I do. You know, I'm living a dream. You know, that's something God, you know, put in my heart. You know, I can honestly say all the way back, you know, when I was a 20-year-old, you know, young man in the military. You know, I love teaching the Bible and everything. I love the things that God has led me to do. But somebody asked me one time, you know, they said, why do you work all the time? You know, why do you work with this stuff all the time? You know, all you get is a little bit of support. You know, you don't have a lot of income. Now, you know, my income comes from God. You know, and that's why the Lord has blessed us, you know, blessed my family the way that he has, why he's provided for us and paid off debts and everything. You know, it's through our faithfulness, you know, starting these ministries. You know, even whenever we didn't have a lot, you know, just by faith and God's always provided. In verse 14, and we'll be through here, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord, a great verse, but you know what I just described about my own self. And that's our last point here, number five, the solution to our life. The solution to our life is just that, that is God, to wait on the Lord. You know, don't make any drastic decision outside of God's will, do what God wants you to do. Wait on him. It says there, be of good courage because God has always provided and he always will. You know, we're serving, you know, the God that owns everything. You know, he owns everything. It was no tall task at all for Jesus to feed them 15,000 people. That's why we can be of good courage. We serve that same God and he shall strengthen thine heart. Say, God will always give you that which you need. God might not pour everything out at one time, but God will always give you enough to take that next step. If you have faith, God will provide everything until the end. Thank you so much there for being with us. I apologize. I don't know how that uh, how the first part of this video. I don't. I really don't even know exactly know uh, know how that stopped, but uh, it did in some way. And so I have to look into that. But thank you though for being with us here. Sorry that it wasn't uh, that it kind of did come out in two parts. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, folks, for being with us and uh, for the prayers and support of our family. You know, appreciate you. You know, those people out there, I know they're, you know, they're, they're close, you know, close friends and relatives. I know that watch some of these videos. And we appreciate you. And for those that view it that, you know, I've never met before, might not be familiar with, I uh, appreciate you as well. Amen. You know, it's good to have, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, people across the miles, as they say, you know, that are praying for you that you might not even know all that well personally. You know, it's good to have brethren and sisters in the faith. Amen. Uh, that uh, that pray for you, uh, that encourage you, and that's a great blessing, amen. It's, that's what we're just out to be, is a help and a blessing to people, amen. Don't want to lose our humility. I know I'm nothing outside of the grace of God, but by the grace of God, amen, uh, we can uh, do great things for the Lord.
And so let's pray for one another. And let's pray for another revival. Amen. That's what this ministry is all about. That's what our heart's on. Is to, uh, is to be revived. And so let's just pray one for another. That God be with us and use us for his honor and glory. Amen. And for now, we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for giving us some sin. Thank you so much for our salvation. Uh, for letting us uh, meet again over the cyberways. And thank you so much for this ministry and all the things that you've led us to do. Thank you for our salvation. And thank you for those brethren and sisters in the faith that do pray for us. That support us. We're so thankful for them. And pray you give them a good blessing. And just give us all that which we need, Lord, to take that next step of our faith, to do what you have us do, Lord, to be what we ought to be, Lord, to build your kingdom. And just to bring us back here to the next point in time, Lord, bless each ministry out there, each preacher, and even each a layman, each lay woman, and those that uh, live for you, pray, bless them in a special way, and give us all that which we need, Lord, to live for you. For it's in Christ's name we do pray all these things, asking that you might save that one nearest hell. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much, folks, for being with us, and we'll see you next time. So the direction of the shadows flee away. I am Brother Cooper, and I love you, and I appreciate you.